it's uh, three in the afternoon. We're downtown Nipigon. Uh, getting ready to go. There's a pretty neat old mural on this old store. Pretty neat little town, right on the shore, northern shore of Lake Superior. This is Bob's truck. He's got a little four-wheeler. Four-wheeler, just like mine, except for he's got a lot of miles on his. Yeah. Up here, he really could put a four-wheeler to the to the use. But, uh, yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. I can tell you right now, this is one of the better moose hunts I've been on before I even got out there. These are local people. They know their moose and they know their territory. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, where we begin at. You uh, can say, this is John Heideman and that's Bob Zerman. You know that little trail for the... Yeah, the tree stand. The, to the left back above that rock, that white thing back there. Right yeah, back in there. Yeah. What a beautiful place. <laughs> what a lot. This, this, this is. All the wood along power. Wow. Here at a neat place. What a neat place. I think it's the 20th of September. Last day of summer. What a beautiful place to kill a moose. Out on the water. Thursday morning, just had a hell of a good hunt, nothing come by, but real good morning. Saturday, when we came up, we came up this little river here, came around behind that little island right there, and uh, we got out right over in here, and uh, a 
I'll show you where the moose was. Yeah, we we docked right where that red flag is, and I walked over here probably about I don't know ten yards, and I snuck up here, and the moose was standing between that point and that point, right, right, a straight line right across there, about 40 yards out. And I shot him point blank right there, and it hit, I had pulled it down real fine, tried to hit it right behind the front shoulder, which was wrong. I should have just shot it right in the middle of the rib cage. And anyhow, it ran, when it ran up, it ran up this little hill here, and I shot another arrow at it right there and hit it high. And uh, uh, and then it took off down yonder, and I shot another arrow down here, about there, and it went high and cut the other arrow off. So if I could have got that one in the right side, and then it didn't happen, and it went on up into that, on up into there. Oh, that's the story. Oh, that's going to work slick. Oh, yeah, oh boy. It's going to work super neat. There's your, there's your all-terrain vehicle along with it comes equipped with a boat. This make a good advertisement for Argo, wouldn't it? That's where we're, we got it all over here. Load it up. Thanks to that boat. Well, that's pretty neat, John. In the future, you got a new mode of transportation. It's noon, right at noon now, and it's time to leave. Got next year's hunt already booked, and uh, days are clock ticking. Clock is ticking. I don't know if I ever have a good as moose hunt with this without killing something. Had two shots, missed. And, uh, figured the yardage wrong. Other than that, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Well, this is how it starts. That's Bob up in front of you. And we're going down the road on Sunday evening for a start to 2010 bear season. It's 73 degrees today. Uh, we've had a little misty rain. Winds out of the south, southwest, which is really good for this stand. So we'll get on up the highway up there. We're going back in to the bush now. And you notice it's doing a little raining. That probably didn't make the video any good right there, but uh, it's, it's been so dry up here, you can see the dust on the road. So, that's a perfect night to kill a bear. We're going down, get down here to the bush. I, I couldn't come down in here if it was raining with my with my van because it would be pretty hard for me to get in and out of here on two wheel drive. But anybody with a four wheel drive is going to get in and out of here. And here we are at the blind. Good luck. Okay, Bobby. Thanks. See you tonight. You have some good stories tonight. Oh yeah. This is some of the bear hunters Monday morning. It, uh, they killed, uh, shot six and brought five in. 
that's the kind of action you can expect. And these are really prime, prime bears here. This is this bear on the end's got to be close to 300 pounds. It's a Pope and Young bear bite. Yeah, it'll, they'll be Pope and Young for sure. When you get a canine that big, that's got to be Pope and Young. Yeah, really nice bears. Really nice bears. Okay, gotta take him over. Dead on arrival. I take him over and weigh him. I think that bear's gonna be close to 300 pounds. Yeah. 275? 275? Two, gotta be more than 250, ain't it? Uh, he might go about 290. 290? Wow, now you gonna give I said 300. Now you gonna give me a right shit of 10 pounds. Jeez, I don't know. He said he's a lot of fat on him, eh? I'm going 300. 300 like that? Dressed. No. No? Not that big? 240, 250. I'll say. What do you think he weighs, Adam? See, I, I, I thought I had enough shoulder. 280, I'm going to say, without the guts. 280 without the guts. So that would have put him 300 on the hoof, huh? Yeah. Or in this case, on the paw. <laughs> Split and say 270. 270? I was going to go with that too, but I thought I'd give him a I went over everybody. I'm going right up near the 300 mark. Yeah, with yeah. or without the guts yesterday, it was everything we could do to move it. Last night, I'm yeah. a little lucky Hanson. Now, what are we thinking here? Are we thinking 270? Two... Everybody's got 70. guesses. 270? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, I needed that ice bag to stay in there. Yeah, that ice bag needed to stay. That's a big bear. <laughs> oh, that's a nice bear. Whoa. What's it reading? Nice. Almost 300. Two... 280? <laughs> if I was a betting man. If I was a betting man. <laughs> what did I say? 250? I said 280. 240. You'd be rich. Does the guy know what he's doing or what? Just short of 350 on the paw. We'll stand beside the He's going to fall off there in a second. He's sliding over his ear right now. <clears throat> hey, hey, what, what did I say again? 280 or something like that? Yeah, he's going to take Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. He's the center of attention once in a while. Here's the two old pros. I mean, the two pros. We'll leave the old part out. <laughs> they got knives in their hands. <laughs> better, sure. better not get smart. I yeah. got my knife with me. <laughs> yeah. There's the two pros. <laughs> it's old, they ain't got no equation in here. <laughs> How many years you guys been coming up here? Oh, shit, I don't know. Quite a few. <laughs> More than I can count on both hands, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the cabin. Out there someplace if you can see it. And the lake, pretty big lake. Two miles long. And then that's just one of our hunting spots. Here's the bait. This bait here was uh, 235 yards and that carcass there I was getting 265. Yeah. So here we are in the Trapper Shack, February 19th. Yep. Scott's been here since Tuesday wolf hunting. He's seen a wolf a bunch of times. We'll talk about that later. Uh, this lynx is hanging on the wall. That Martin is number 298. And if you look over here, on this wall, hanging, trying to dry, or thaw out, sorry, is 299, or excuse me, 199 and number 200. This is my 200th Martin of the year, and it's been one hell of a year. And I didn't get going early, so uh, I've just got all kinds of uh, enthusiastic thinking about next year. We're all kind of excited. We're trapping, we're hunting, life is good. Life is great. And Scott has been, how many days is this? This, this is a week, not a week. Just about a week. 
almost yeah tomorrow will uh, be a week well no it's actually about six days five days because we went fishing right oh yeah we went fishing. we took a day to go yeah. fishing murray's camp yeah we my my nearest neighbor <laughs> yep murray <laughs> is 15 or 20 miles that way and we went through the bush and uh you know of course we trapped our way over there and then checked and then popped into murray's house and murray's cabin where he lives and him and his wife becky and and uh, we went fishing for the day we had a hell of a time i showed him how to fish <laughs> yeah he did <laughs> yeah they give us a little u.s fishing lesson there put on a little what do you call those uh clinic, clinic a bit of a clinic yeah. going yeah. on there yeah. it was great it was an awesome time great people can't say enough about them yeah. We had uh what did we catch? Three three lake trout. We? I should have I should have <laughs> caught another another three yeah. adder right up You had about ice, six yeah. up to the hole there total, I guess. We ended up with three, but we had lots to eat. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Anyway now Scott's been seeing the same wolf, a big wolf that keeps hanging around here and uh we're trying he's, to kill him. He's a big male. I've seen him five times now. And uh, yeah, saw him twice today, and I just gotta I gotta put the move on him because he knows that I'm here. So he's not he's not giving yeah, us a good shot at 300 yards. He seems to always be popping out a little the bit. The first the first the first time that I saw him, he's at 300 yards, but he was behind the tag alders, and I wasn't gonna try to. I'm shooting a 250, and I wasn't gonna try to bounce that little ball through the tag alders. So the best shot after that's been a little over 400 or right at 400 and I just yesterday that was yesterday it was really windy and I just know that I can uh, yeah, I, I still got a few more days so I'm gonna try to close the distance on him and if he keeps crossing where he's crossing he's doing it pretty religiously there's only been one day that I haven't seen him so he left this wolf here crossed that open and there's been a wolf that we've been trying to get out here he's he's lame on his I believe his back right leg and I uh, just haven't been able to close the deal on him and uh, finally yesterday this one comes out and uh, not knowing exactly what her intentions were I was getting a little bit anxious because it's my ninth day out here and uh, she ended up after about an hour she poked up out, out of the alders down there at the very end at about Whoa. 380 yards Whoa. I wasn't right. quick enough to get through that well I had my gun area. through the hole but she started trotting up the gun. ice and I thought she's gonna come all the way up to the bait well she yeah. didn't that night before she had some scattered bones yeah. down there Broke she grabbed morning. one and got, went back into the bush so yeah. about we two hours later right I could see her behind these tag alders here I could Saturday. just catch glimpses of her every once in a while. I knew it was yeah. just a matter of time and she was going to pop back out. I was just hoping she'd do it during yeah. daylight hours. Well, after seeing her probably two more times, at about two hours between, I literally stood at the end of the bed looking out that little window. I will do that. Not wanting to scare Might any ravens or anything. Because I, I knew she was real timid. Well, finally, it Hello. was about uh, 520 yeah. last night. She crossed on the other side of that point and went back east the way she had come yesterday morning. And I thought, well, my day was over with. Well, what she was doing is the wind was out of the north. She was just getting the wind right for this bait. She ended up working her way through the trees and she comes out. She come right back across the lake. She stopped down there where she had originally come out. And all of a sudden she decided she's going to come in and eat something. She comes up to this bait right here. And the ravens kind of spooked her off. They were attacking her. She was jumping at them, biting at them. She runs back towards the bush and then turns and goes down. There's a carcass laying right down here. And when she stopped to, to grab it, I, I shot her. She hit the ground immediately. She wiggled a few more times and I shot her again. I'm used to coyote hunting. They keep moving, you keep shooting. I shot her again and it was all over with. Hit her. Hit her high the first shot, more than likely I spined her, and then the second shot was, it's only an inch and a half away from the original shot, but uh, great hunt, 
Uh, it takes a lot of patience, but that's what it's all about. Any kind of hunting it takes a lot of patience. But uh, beautiful scenery, had absolutely the time of my life, and I gotta thank Bob so very much for the opportunity. Because to date, it's the best hunt that I've ever that I've ever gone through. I've done a little bit of hunting, but I haven't done a ton. But it's by far the, the best hunt that I've ever gone through because I love predator hunting. So thank you so much, Bob. Appreciate it. My pleasure.